Okay, so for this Cam Park site, one of our chief uh, drivers, chief concerns, chief management challenges here is the hydrology. So right now we are um, hovering over the channel and we are looking uh, downstream. Uh, we are looking at the bridge that, uh, the Camarillo Street Bridge that's crossing uh, Cayugas Creek right here. Um, this is a great, this is a really um, important site for a variety of reasons. One, we have a USGS gauging station here. So this is an area we've been monitoring actively for the amount of water and the flows for uh, decades. So we have a nice history here about um, what the water is doing in this particular channel. This channel is also channelized and has been so for over 100 years. So we're really constraining the flow that otherwise would spread out into the agricultural uh, uh, fields on either side of the river. The current levees are um, a, a key factor. And as we, as we start to spin here, let's actually do a 360 here, a slow 360. Now, as we're starting to look here, we're, we're beginning to look more um, towards the city of Oxnard, towards the city of uh, Ventura. And we see that we have uh, standing water. We're recording this mid-November of 2020. So we've not had any significant rains for uh, some time. And we see uh, there's all kinds of water here. Strong levee. So the levee here is about uh, 15 feet above the, the water level right now, 15, 20 feet, depending on the water level. As we continue to spin, we see that we have a, and we, if we pause here for a second, we'll see that we have the Thalwig, the deep part of the channel, where it has uh, that, that standing water and that flowing water. Then we have this um, initial part of the channel that is, um, while it's not in the heavy, in the main flow, it's still constrained, it's still in the area within the, um, the levee. And so this sandy area is an area that can get inundated when we get heavy flows. So say uh, Christmas time, uh, New Year's, first good flows of the year, we would expect water to be flowing all over here. But during the rest of the year, this region is dry. Uh, the other thing we see is um, the riparian vegetation. We have a good amount of uh, arundo in here. So we have a mix of typha and, and native uh, rushes and, and cattails and things of that nature. But then we also have uh, the introduction of this non-native reed. As we continue to, as we continue to do our 360, we see um, the other, uh, the other uh, side of the levee, the other, uh, uh, Yep, there we go. So we can see that that levee pretty good. Now this levee is um, boulders and concrete. Um, as we continue to spin, this is something that we would like to think about in terms of management. Should we take this levee down? In the case of the bridge, we need to be careful. If we were to take this levee down completely, that could lead to the erosion of the road and bridge. But, um, but so, so this part of the levee right here, proximate to this important infrastructure, in this case, a bridge, we need to be very careful about proposals to do any changing with that. Um, and as we keep spinning, we're back looking down channel now. Uh, and so again, we don't wanna do anything that's gonna jeopardize some of the existing uses that the stakeholders really want and access to a university campus is one of those key uses that most people um, uh, still wanna uh, preserve. Okay, so uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna look up, up channel now. And as we uh, start to look up channel, we're gonna actually start to move and fly up channel. So let's start uh, heading, heading up. Um, again, we see that mix of the deep area where we have water the area, it's a little bit higher elevation. Uh, that's more uh, a mix of riparian vegetation and sandy. And uh, we see, uh, as we pause here for a second, um, the levee that is on our left-hand side, okay, which is the, the levee on the, on the northern edge of the uh, Cuyahoga's Creek, that's gonna be a hard one to touch. We probably don't wanna touch that. One, we as the university don't own that. Um, and two, there's all kinds of important uh, economic activity, in this case, um, orchards on this side of the levee. So we don't wanna mess with that. But as we continue to, to fly up and look a little bit to the right, um, that the levee that's on the Camarillo Park side, that is something we could possibly uh, adjust or take down or modify because we only do passive recreation um, there. So as, as, we, as we pause here and look a little bit to the right, you can actually see the levee the, uh, right now. So again, it's a lot of a lot of boulders with fill on top of it. That's that's the entirety of the levee. Okay, so um, we have the levee on either side. Now, as we continue to fly up uh, the channel, 
all kinds of important services here. This is really important habitat for, uh, we have, we have a lot, all kinds of critters, terrestrial mammals we get in here. We get all kinds of fish in here. We get all kinds of birds in here. So this is a really important uh, area, um, both for just getting drinking water for some critters, uh, living uh, space for some critters, etc. Okay. So now we're going to pause and we're going to look a little bit to the left. And here we start to see this lighter yellow vegetation. This is Arundo donax, non-native, um, a giant, uh, reed uh, no it's not a giant reed it's 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 um it's a rundo it's it's a rundo donax it's a, a hugely problematic invasive um species unclear where this came from uh the debate rages on some people think it originated in in basically the area around india some people think it originated around the mediterranean but what we do know is it did not come from from here so it was introduced originally for people that wanted to do um uh, uh, for some commercial things that ended up not working out and then it escaped cultivation and it's it's the uh, uh hugely problematic bringing disturbance bringing fire lowering water tables causing all kinds of challenges Okay, so now let's look at the rest of Camp Park. So we're gonna, uh, now we're looking towards the main area of the park and we're gonna fly up a little bit and get a little more perspective here on this site. Now, even though the, the floodplain here that we're starting to look at, um, which, is in, which is in the upland side of the, um, of the levee, still has a lot of good functioning. So we have some constraints. We have a condor field there that we see in the, in the um, sort of middle part of our view. But as we look down a little bit, this vegetation area, this is all jurisdictional wetland, this, right, this vegetation. Um, so while we, we don't have direct connectivity of surface flows where the surface water um, uh, f jumps out of the channel and then inundates that area every year, it's so low that as the flood waters rise, you'll, the water table will come up and indeed you'll have standing water inside that part of um, Camp Park. And so, so this area is absolutely uh, jurisdictional wetland and absolutely can be improved if we were to do things like perhaps take down the levee or take down parts of the levee or make the levee a bit more permeable, etc. Constraints here are, uh, as we look up, um, obviously we, we, we hit the mountains and so we get into more terrestrial area. We have some um, historic development and some current active development like condor field. The condors actively manipulate the landscape around here. They actively chop down um, the shrubs, the, the um, baccarus and cowdy bush and, and those kinds of things um, for reasons we can talk about. Um, but so that's a source of potential disturbance to the vegetative community. But this area is relatively high. This area was actually filled way back when um, for some other historic purposes uh, and then was, was later taken over by the condors. Um, um, so yeah, so there we go. So we have this, this area, we have the, the riparian channel, we have the levee, we have the wetland vegetation landward of the levee, and we have the, um, uh, uh, the more terrestrial areas. Now, when we're, when we do this, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a bit of, um, assessment. So one of the things we're going to look at are so-called assessment areas. Now, when we talk about riparian wetlands, um, we've not looked at riparian wetlands uh, yet, but as we, as we look down, um, we're going to pick an assessment area. That's going to mean, that means the area that we're going to focus our examination of the community on. And so this area is going to be right about there. So we're going to look at the area inside of the levee and the area outside of the levee. Those will be different assessment areas. When we do an assessment, a cram assessment, we want our assessment areas to span only one type of wetland. And technically speaking, even though this is all one big system, it used to be one all healthy system because of this levee, because of the changed hydrologic connectivity, we need to um, uh, treat them as, as if they really are two distinct wetlands for the purpose of this assessment. So we'll have um, an assessment area inside the levee and assessment area outside the levee. Um, one of the key things as we start to fly up here and just get some perspective, one of the things we're gonna do as the first step um, is, is just look at the landscape. So what is the landscape of this wetland like? Again, is it uh, relatively healthy? Is it relatively stressed? Is it relatively disturbed? Is it part of a complex of other similar wetlands? And this is just one part of it, or is it more isolated and alone? 
Does it have intense development around it? Uh, uh, you know, concrete, urbanization, that type of stuff, etc. So we'll be looking at that uh, uh, out at Cam Park. Okay, so there we go. So, um, so uh, we'll just we'll just turn and look back down channel and finish our initial uh, uh, examination of Camarillo Regional Park here on the campus of CSUCI.